Hey guys, good morning. 5.14, um, been up since 2. This message I've had for a while, a couple weeks, um, Revelations 12 and 1, they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. Not overcome, overcame. So I'm not an English guy, but you know where I'm going with that. It's just very positive, very good news. So the reason why I titled this, why is a testimony I always have a test? Testimony, test is at the beginning. I'm going to give you a few because the Lord told me in prayer some things. One of them was his word wouldn't go out void. I'm getting this stuff in prayer, guys, so I know what my source is. That's how I can say this. I'm not backing down. I'm not changing it. I'm about my father's business. He said, my word would not go out void. It would accomplish that which I sent it out to, out for. Forgive me if I misquoted it. And then he said that I was going to encourage people to have faith, to believe that his word is righteous, true, holy, good. So I'm going to be about my father's business. Well, I decided to take a stance, be about my father's business against the censorship and the voice that's being stolen and many other things coming in against the abortion issue, which is just the biggest sin that's destroying America, if there's a bigger one. Because we're living under this umbrella of death. And several other things. I'm going to just give you some of the tests that I'm basing in the Lord's walking me through. One is last night. But a backdrop to this. <clears throat> Facebook has tried everything they can. I don't know why they just didn't just unplug me. And they might. But they've censored me, restricted me. For this message, some of the messages I put out, just please look them up. And watch them. Different ones. But... All hell's been breaking loose. But that's another one of my favorite scriptures. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. I told my wife, I said, that we could change some things. I could do some things a little differently. But I'm on the wheel in parts of my life. And I don't feel led to move. It hurts. The pruning hurts. The purification hurts. The things that God's taking out of my heart, changing but I'm not a big landscape guy. I will get back to these tests in a second. I'm not a big landscape guy. Our yard looked really good. But we've had some edges and I just, I'm just not. Some people are. I'm just not that guy. Try. But so we get our neighbor to cut our yard and grass. And he's been doing a great job. And I pay him a little bit extra. And man, but I watched him one day. It cut our grass, and he wouldn't spend like not even five minutes cutting our hedges. Well, it took a few months. They look great now. It's been about six months, actually. They look awesome. They filled in. They're, they look live again. They were already live looking, but they, you know, they had spots and blemishes, and just now they look whole. It's to fulfill a purpose. They fulfilled all the holes. They just look really good. That pruning probably hurt. So that's where I'm at. So this is the test last night. I'm going to give you several of them. I'm not, not looking for sympathy or anything, honestly. I'm just telling you to encourage you. Because it's very encouraging, honestly. 
all hell broke loose last night. No, all night. My wife wakes me up at two in the morning. The car's gone. Here's a police report. It was an accident. They broke your glass. They tried to get a hold of us. Okay, this, it's like, man, it's two in the morning. I've got things in my car I needed. You. I mean, man, so it's like, man, it's hard. just like amped up the hassle at the least and the frustration. And then I'll, but, but I know God is something in store for this. And it all come, it, it, it all get taken care of. It's just things. But it was like, man, I needed my car today. Of all days, I was, several things happened in this. My wife always keeps the phone by the side of her bed because we got kids and grandkids, and there's just, you know, we never know when something might happen, an emergency. She was so tired last night. I mean, I mean, literally 99.95% of the time, the phone, she's like, before bedtime even, she's like, she'll not even wake me up trying to plug her phone in, make sure it's charged. And she's pretty thorough about it. Last night, she didn't do it. She was so tired, she didn't do it. She had left her phone in her car when she went out to do some errands. I got a little dog, a little chihuahua that's scared of everything, pretty much. Barks if, if a gnat fell to the ground and died, just any noise or interruption of her life sleeps with us, didn't bark. The police knocked on the door. Two of our neighbors knocked on our door. I woke up when it happened and heard this crash. I'll do, but I didn't, I just, to going back to sleep and then a minute later I saw all these flashing lights well it was a police car I thought it was an ambulance you know one of our neighbors so I prayed for him because we've got you know we live in a neighborhood where there's a lot of older elderly people my neighbor across the street maybe or just there's several people that are you know older and unfortunately some are about to pass from this earth So I just prayed for him and went back to sleep. Didn't get up. The police came. My wife normally doesn't lock the screen door. She did last night. So they couldn't get into the wood door to where we would have probably heard it. So my dog didn't even bark, guys. And they didn't even ring the doorbell. Because you can hear the doorbell. So it's like, okay, Lord. Why, 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 why? So I'm tired and we've got company things to do. Relatives visiting. I've got plans for today at 11 o'clock for brunch. I was like, you just need to go back to bed. I'm like, while I'm up, I, I get up a lot. I'm praying. I was like, okay. There's a reason, Lord. a thankful, grateful heart. Because I don't know what he's going to do. Maybe I'll get a chance to witness to the tow truck driver or to the city pile where my car is at now, I guess. I, I tried to call and of course they're closed. It's middle of the night. I don't know what's going to transpire, but I know who's in charge. Test. Become the testimony. Because I have chosen to be about my father's business. Let's go back. I will say this one on the one, and then I'll leave the te tests alone. And tell you about the voice, our voice, that the enemy wants to steal, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But it's not to sing a little louder and to shout a little louder and to be obnoxious backside of your anatomy, for lack of a better terms, on YouTube, Facebook, be that abrasive preacher. Man, I say this 
light, not lightly, but everybody wants to be a prophet, an apostle, something that they may or may not be. Why? So that nobody can tell them what to do, including God. And there's lots, thousands of churches. Go to any one of them. There's 10 prophets lined up. Everybody's a prophet, business card, whatever. He's showing us things all in the prophetic realm. So just get over yourselves, guys. Be about your father's business. A really good friend of mine. I haven't known him that long, but we became good friends, Aaron Buttrick. And if you saw what this, he's just a street preacher. Smart, very intelligent guy though too. Doesn't act like it though. I mean, he, I mean, he doesn't portray it and try to be something that he's not and overpower you with it. I know he's very intelligent. I know he's got a lot behind him, but he just gets out there and gets it done. So I am like Larry the Cable Guy. He's feeding the people in Dallas. But this is one another. So, one of his messages recently was about pastors, and it's just time to get over ourselves, guys, and be about our father's business, however that looks. That's my encouragement to you. So, I don't care if you're the pauper, or the president, or a king, or a rich businessman, or a poor guy that's living homeless. I don't care. If one of my prayers. I don't care if you're living under the outhouse or in the penthouse. God is God. Joel's army is coming forth. And the enemy can't do anything about it. We can drive through roadblocks, obstacles, but it's for us to overcome by the word, by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our testimony, even unto death. This one of many, but according to the doctors, this was almost two years ago. I couldn't even walk, guys. I would fall over. And it just happened recently, a couple of days ago. It hadn't happened in months. But went to the doctor, long story, a bunch of tests, MRIs. But according to the pictures of the MRIs, parts of my brain, they showed me, had died. So basically gone. I was like, and I looked at the door and I'm like, what do I do? And they were like, you know, nothing much you can, nothing you can do. And they were very professional, good. And the doctor was great. The nurse doctor, I think she was a practitioner. She was even better. She was way more detailed. He was good though too. But they were. It was just very. I mean, they were really good doctors. They said they were experts. I could tell. One of the parts was my balance. I'm sitting in my chair praying. So come on now, God, you can't, guys, you can't, I'm not going to change. I know where this is coming from. Um, you're not there. Uh, my wife's not up. My dog is not sometimes even up. <clears throat> Early in the morning, I said, God, this isn't going to work. I would literally fall walking. Out of the blue. Dozens of times, guys. I mean, what if I'm, you know, how many of y'all been to Walmart and you're cutting across the parking lot and there's some somebody in a truck and you, you feel like they're going to run you over if you don't hurry. God, what if I fall in front of these people on the parking lot? Nobody's going to see me. I'm going to become roadkill. You know, it wasn't fear. It was just like, man, this isn't going to work, God. I started singing this song. I'm like one of my things about broken and contrite spirit, but I started singing this song. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. I'm going to get to the voice piece in a minute. I started singing that, crying out to God, praying, you know, something pretty serious happens. It's amazing how somehow we really want to get a hold of God. 
And I was like, praying, really praying. I needed a healing. I needed some help. He spoke to me and he said, I'm living in your brokenness. He said again, I'm dwelling in your brokenness. Thank God I'm listening because I'm kind of broke. He said, look at Peter when he denied me three times. Paul, when he was Saul, Esther, when she had to go before the king, he didn't just walk into the king's palace and say, hey, dude, you know, Mordecai is doing this. And, and there's people, suck-ups, kind of, you know, some of them, but everybody was, many of people waiting to kill her. Just to try to get favor with the king. Don't you think there's a little apprehension there? Moses' mom. She had to send a little baby out to a crocodile, dirty, infested waters. Who mothers would do that? True mothers. Not knowing if you're ever going to see that child again. Knowing you're probably not. As we know the greatness and goodness of God, and she did. She didn't know that at the time. Mary, Jesus' mother, watched him, his life taken in such a way. But it was unto a purpose. So many people in the Bible, but they were examples that were broken for a purpose. It's even scriptural, guys. He said, you can't pour new wine into old vessels or they're going to burst. <clears throat> so take the pruning. Take the purging because it's going to bring life. There's so many messages that go with this. I, I can't, I'm not going to get to them all because i got to stay on this voice one. So that became a message, though, for me, guys. The end of what he said was what really got to me. He said, even my own son, who was broken for all of mankind. And it broke my heart. Would you send your son or daughter to a foreign land knowing how the people were going to treat him? To be killed. No, you wouldn't. Not even close. That's how much God loves us. And so it became a message that I used at the homeless shelter. We ministered to a lot of homeless people. That's just us. All over the place. Not just shelters, but all over the street. And now there's a lot more of them, guys. This is come where I'm going to get to with the voice. This was a message the Lord gave me. I would tell him, I don't care about your circumstances, because guys, none of mine are greater than yours. That's not my message or my point. It was that the song through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. I had to learn to trust in and for every single step I took, guys, because I did not know if the next one wasn't going to be hitting the ground ball throttle and I'm old and I would break my neck. I wouldn't be here. Or my, a bone or a leg. You know, so many things could happen. You know, stumble, fall off the steps. Like I said, I got no warning. It's like my legs got cut out. They didn't even exist. Test. Testimony. I learned to trust in Jesus every single step I take. Well, that's the prayer thing, guys. That's His voice wanting to talk to us, to give us direction in this messy world. Look around. But this was one day I was at the shelter, and it's a long story, but I said, 
Lord, what do I do? We're not getting people to come down here like we want to do in the ministry side. <clears throat> and uh, so what do I do? He said, get in to testify because they feel like their voice has been stolen. So I did. I had some awesome testimonies. Two of them, one lady in a wheelchair, long story. But the scripture that what you proclaiming was through it all, or not through it all, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Another lady, a broken crank can still call her. So many, um, they're they're long, and you know maybe one day if if you want them, I'll give them to you in full version. You just have to email me. My email's on here, but it's Jesus is alive in America at gmail dot com. But. <clears throat> So fast forward it to today, the corona pandemic has stolen our voice. How are you with the mask? What has it done, guys? I mean, we could go into all these rabbit holes. Nothing. What has Dr. Fossey done? Nothing but destroy the country. What's their plan? They don't have one. It's just lock you up, wear a mask. Okay, great. Been on this for 10 months. Why can't we talk about drugs that might work? And this will correlate to the point I'm getting to. Can't say anything about it. Facebook will censor you. I get the censor piece, guys, really bad. I get the stolen voice piece really bad. There is no pandemic, guys. My wife was in the hospital. I, I live in Dallas, and it's a big hospital. I'm not talking about one building. There was whole buildings that were dedicated just to cancer. It was 10 buildings, 15, 20. It was huge. Spent three hours down there one day and got, you know, it was like, man, I'm trying to find things and play. And it's a long story, but it was big. But you know what? There's no refrigerated trucks sitting outside with dead bodies. There's no temporary mortuary. No ambulances flying in and out. There's no people running to and fro. There's no panic like the media says. That should be ground zero. There's no panic, pandemic. There's no, it's not a war zone. It's to get us to shut up, to silence ourselves, to be fearful. I didn't from day one and still don't. 99.95% of the time I don't wear a mask. I keep one in my pocket. If somebody really harasses me. There's a couple, one store that I don't really want to shop at, but there's a reason why I have to shop there. I just get tired of listening to people yell at me, so I wear one. But otherwise, no. I walk. That's a. I walk in. There's more than one store I walk in. I get. I get all kinds of. I'm not doing it to be sensational. I'm doing it for a stance because I know what's standing behind it. What's behind it? The spirit that's behind it. To steal, kill, and destroy. To steal our voice. Why can't we say things and talk about things? Everybody else does. You say something. Oh, fact checkers. Well, who's checking those guys? This is, you know, I put things on the internet. And it's like, man, who's, you know, I'm not getting... People say much about it. A lot of a lot of twisted up lies going on right now. To take our voice. But we all, but what does it say? They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the words of their testimony. So what's God telling you to do? It's time to be about our father's business. And so I'll tell you another 5,000 things that I'm kind of up against. But that's okay. Because a lot of the testimonies. But the, I'll end with this. The fall thing just came back recently. I'm going to go to the doctor again. I don't want to. I was in my garage. My wife was in the hospital. I was dealing with a bunch of different things. Not just the hospital thing. The enemy coming in like a flood. And I'm doing some stuff in the garage. Well, got a two-step 
step down from, from the house to the garage. Because we have a pair of beam house. A couple days before, and it had happened more than once, I just got this really weird muscle spasm in my legs, in my right leg. And it just, it would give out. Well, I fell, but there was walls there. I caught myself against the wall two or three times. This time, it gave out, and I fell flat on my back, guys, on two steps. Went a soft landing. Felt like I broke my back. Sore for days. Better now, but... Then, a day or two later, I realized it felt like somebody pushed me. Moved it around. The enemy pushing, demanding. If it's a demand, it's from the devil. If it's a command, it's from the Lord. He wants to live holy and acceptable. He wants to hear his voice and no other. The prayer piece is so important. But it's time that we're his, his voice in this land. Voice for the born and the unborn. Voice of reason in the season. What's he telling you to do, guys? It's time to be about our Father's business. Arise and shine. It's Joel's army. <clears throat> We're not going to win this by barking louder than the next person. We're going to win this in prayer and supplication and bringing it to the Lord and trusting him in all his ways and acknowledging him. He'll direct our paths. So, I am going to stay in this battle, stir the pot, whatever, whatever the Lord is telling me to do. YouTube's trying to channel me a little bit more than they should. Facebook really is. My platform does not have to be that anyhow. It's wherever the Lord sends me. He's sending me different places, even down the street, 7-Eleven a lot. We're running a lot of homeless people because they're sitting there. They want to try to get some food. I ministered and witnessed to so many of them. And not to gloat, promote myself. I don't even have a church, guys, but I'm a minister of the gospel, and so are you. So what are you doing with it? Are you about your father's business? Kind of like, who's your daddy? What are you doing? That's why the prayer is so important. That's why that I pushed play on the 5 a.m. prayer. Because it's quiet. There's not a lot going on. It starts the day. And the Lord told me to say that. We need to pray as a nation because he sees your house is different, your address is different, your wife might be asleep, your husband might be asleep, your kids. He wants us to pray as a nation because he sees that. That's all that really matters, guys. You don't have to go to Washington and scream and yell and have a rock band and say it's a move of God. The sensationalism. If that's what he's telling you to do, then do it. But honestly, most of it I don't believe. I can say that with a surety because I get a lot of stuff in prayer, guys. And you do too. Many of you do. I see it on a lot of your posts. Some really good, strong Christian people out there. It's not just in one church either, and it's not even about the church. There's some really good people out there. And it's probably in the millions, honestly. But it's not in the hundreds of millions like people portray it to be. Not everybody's where they need to be with God. Some people are in different parts of their journey. Some people claim to be Christians and aren't. Some people are and they're just not doing what the Lord told them to do. I'm just encouraging you. Step into the destiny that the Lord has for you. Be about your father's business. 
but you're not going to get it without the prayer piece. This is going to end with this. He told me, he said, this last day, outpouring was going to be birth in prayer and planning and provision. By planning, it kind of sounds like something that, you know, new agey the world comes up with. Now I know the plans that I have for you. Future, I open a promise. God's plan was his son. God's orderly, he has a plan. His plan for the salvation of mankind was Jesus. But use what you got, whether it's your voice, whether it's on the internet, whether it's behind the scenes, whatever he's telling you to do. But he's not going to be tell, able to tell you what to do if we're not praying and seeking him. If we're too busy listening to others, including preachers or the world, or of course this politics and garbage, pretty much all of it is, honestly. Unless if Jesus is at the center of this, it's not going to work. So who's your source? Let's get our voice back. Say what you must, but guard your heart, your mind. Don't get polluted, don't spit out stuff. It's I, I get it, it's hard. I do the same thing, guys. I got caught up in some of that on Facebook and started just blasting, reposting stuff. And it's like, I backed off because some of it's the memes and all, all kinds of crazy stuff. Pretty easy, convenient, and you just man get caught up in. We can be, we can be this and do the same thing that we're accusing the world of. Prayer and supplication. Be anxious in nothing. That's I think I forget which scripture is four twelve and Peter I think or anyhow it says be anxious for nothing, but in prayer and supplication bring it to the Lord. And he'll give you the peace that passes all understanding to guard your heart and your mind. Why would he want to guard your heart and mind? Because the enemy wants to bury you alive with demands. And your attention. I'm going to end with this, but brief example. I'm going to change, but there's a Bible tool book that I use, but... I always want to look up the scriptures. It's got narrower and narrower and narrower. Not even a third of the page is the scripture. Anything else is ads, face mask ads, Bible ads, uh, just stuff, bleeping and pfft. man, I'm just trying to look up some scriptures, guys. That's what this is supposed to be. Instead, it's all. stuff everywhere you go you know you can't even and you have your phone on just not even trying to answer a call and you get some amber alert you get a this i'm not saying that there's something wrong with that but i'm saying it's just one distraction after another <clears throat> news feeds and you know it's just a man it's burying us alive in junk so i say guard your heart mind and heart because if it gets up here it can get into here so we need to be as voice but a righteous voice voice of reason for the season <clears throat> needs to be birthed in prayer and in what we want because we're trying to build a church a ministry or something it, and that's that's awesome and great if that's what the mantle that God's given you. But what if it's not? Just be true to Him, guys. So it's the right voice. <clears throat> Love you. Sorry to be a little long on this one, um, but it's just time to take a stand and to be His voice and to walk in the cool of the day test so we can have a testimony.
Amen.